Can you guess the deadliest animal on Earth? Here's a little hint for you. You probably have close encounters with this deadly creature all the time. The answer isn't a snake, which, by the way, does kill about 50,000 people each year. And it's not a human, although we are responsible for about 475,000 deaths each year. The deadliest animal on Earth is the lowly mosquito. Mosquitoes are blamed for about 725,000 annual deaths, mostly through the transmission of malaria. But a scientific breakthrough pioneered in Cambridge could provide our best weapon yet to combat these tiny mass killers. This discovery is the work of Dr. Kevin Esfeld. He is a technical development fellow at Harvard's Wise Institute, and we want to welcome him to Greater Boston. It's nice to see you. Thank you, Kevin. Pesky little mosquitoes. Who knew, right? Oh, they're definitely a problem in more <laughs> ways than one. So let's talk about this new technology in layman's terms, because, you know, obviously uh, most of us don't understand the whole genome thing, if you will. Yeah, so the problem with mosquitoes is that we really can't alter wild populations of mosquitoes or really of anything. Right. So we're, it's great on dogs. We've bred dogs for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. We know them, we love them. But we can't alter wild things. And why is that? Well, when we alter something, we're doing it typically for us. But that doesn't do much for the organism. Hmm. In fact, it usually hurts the organism's ability to survive and reproduce in the wild. Mm -hmm. With mosquitoes, we want to alter them so they can't carry malaria anymore. We thought, well, how is that possible? That alteration, we know, decreases the mosquito's fitness in the wild. But there are some genes in the wild that can still spread through populations, even if they reduce the fitness of the organism. And we thought, well, maybe we can harness these to right. spread that malaria resistance gene through mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. It's not a new idea, but what we've done is outline a way of actually doing it using a new genome editing technique that we helped develop called CRISPR, which is these molecular scissors. Huh, very interesting. So let's take a look, because you've, you've actually got like a, a mosquito uh, family tree here for us. Yes. So you can show us how you actually drive these genes through a whole generation or two or three or seven of mosquitoes. That's right. So if you look at the diagram, it's a typical family tree of mosquitoes. You can think <laughs> of mom mosquito and dad mosquito. Right. You know that some of them are blue. So we're using blue ones. These are our mosquitoes that we've altered in the lab so that they can't carry malaria anymore. Now, this is not work that we've done, but there are a number of labs throughout the world that have come up with ways of doing this. The trick is, how can we get that mutation into all the mosquitoes? And the trick here is, you'll note that every offspring of a blue mosquito is also blue. And that's oh, the I'm trick to a here. gene drive. I see that. Even I though they're mating that. with the wild gray right. mosquitoes, right. all the offspring always inherit the blue. And that's because the CRISPR system copies the altered gene in every generation. Wow. So it only took four generations and boom, it was gone. And, and boom, it's there. But of course, in reality, we're not, you know, there are billions and billions of mosquitoes. Sure, sure. And we can only release so many of them that are altered. Absolutely. And that means it's going to take many generations for them hmm. to spread through the population. And that means that, you know, it might take a few years, mm -hmm. but potentially we could modify all the mosquitoes so they couldn't transmit malaria. And malaria is not the only disease. Right. Mosquitoes also transmit dengue, chikungunya, West Nile, and many others. There are other Nasty diseases, things. Other diseases that are insect-borne. <laughs> it could potentially right. work for all of them. But it's even more general than that, because this can work not just in mosquitoes or other insects. It could work in potentially anything that we could engineer in the laboratory. That means we could also use it to tackle invasive species. Wow. Well, let me bring another voice in, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. I would like to introduce, this is Tim Duchesne, and he is the senior digital editor at WGBH's Nova and editor of the online platform Nova Next, and it's good to have you with us. So you did some research, chatted with Kevin, and, and wrote a piece on this, and tell me why, why you were interested in this research. Well, I think one of the things about it that really fascinated me was the power as Kevin said, this is applicable not just for mosquitoes, but well beyond mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the fact that we could then go out and alter potentially any wild population uh, in the world is something that we really haven't done yet and we haven't had the possibility to do. We've been talented at editing the genomes of you know, crop species and things that are under our care very carefully, um, but actually taking that and then going out and potentially changing anything 
uh, in the world. I think this could be one of the kind of biggest stories in science to come out in a while. Well, but there could certainly be some implications associated with that. Not everyone might think that's such a great idea. Absolutely. And we've already heard from some people that disagree that this isn't a great idea. Um, but, you know, given that the technology's here and that it's coming, um, I think it's only a matter of time before it, it makes it into the mainstream and that it happens. So, Doctor, could you ultimately alter humans? I mean, could you make everyone in my family have blue eyes? Absolutely not. Or, well, assuming that you could through other means, and we don't know how to do that right now, mm -hmm. but even if you could, you couldn't alter all of humanity. And the reason is that generations time. It takes many generations to spread through a population, right? And our generations are so long mm -hmm. that if you wanted to alter a population of humans, it would take centuries or thousands of years. Sure. It's just not possible. What about food? You know, food is a tough one because a lot of them reproduce fairly quickly, depending on annual crops and so on. But here's the thing, as, as Tim just mentioned, we control the breeding of those crops pretty carefully. And most of them, honestly, are, are carefully bred in laboratories for optimal mm -hmm. traits. Mm -hmm. We don't just let them mate with anything. We don't with our, we don't with our pets or any, right. so on either. And that's why gene drives really couldn't do that without our consent, which really reduces a lot of the potential for misuse. Now, I'd like to say, you know, it is a new technology, and as Tim mentioned, it could potentially be very powerful. And that's one reason why we wanted to put that out there as a possibility mm -hmm. right. to start this discussion, because we're talking about potentially altering wild populations, and that means whole ecosystems. Right. So we have to be sure we do this responsibly, mm -hmm. because we all rely on those ecosystems, and we have to pass them on healthy sure. to our children. And Tim, very quickly, what kind of response have you heard from it? Are, are people feeling good about it, or are a lot of people you know, sort of up in arms? I think uh, I was expecting a much more um, vociferous uh, outcry, mm, right. kind of. Uh, but what we've heard has been a little more mixed. I think people uh, recognize some of the value here uh, in engineering mosquitoes, for example, to not carry malaria, and some of the power with invasive species. I think invasive species have gotten to the point where everybody has some in their backyard. They know how it's affected different sure. uh, places in their in their own backyard, and. Um, and, and they do see some value, but a lot of them also do see some of the, some of the caution that this requires. It's research to watch. Thank you both very, very much for being a part of Greater Boston.